DILR is terrifying and mind numbing. It is so random and uncertain. There is no hope of me clearing sectionals. This is vastly exaggerated and dramatized, guys. The DILR is not as difficult as everyone projects it. Of course, it is quite unpredictable, but with the right strategy, you can achieve consistency. Today, we will look at the best approach to crack DILR. The secret to crack CAT is taking a lot of mocks. We at Cracku give all the previous year's CAT, ZAT and IFT papers in the actual exam format. Also, if you just google Cracku free CAT mock, you can find 3 free CAT mocks in the latest exam pattern. You can take them and get detailed analysis. The trend has always been that students struggle to ace DILR. There are many students who are very good at quant, very good at verbal, but their DILR scores are quite inconsistent. The reason is that when it comes to quant and verbal, there is a definitive strategy how you can improve it. Let's say quant, you get your fundamentals right, you solve a lot of questions, score gradually improves. Or when it comes to verbal, you read more books, more books like more content books like philosophical books or art books, then you get better slowly. But when it comes to DILR, there is no tooth and nail strategy which always works. But we will share a few strategy which has worked consistently every year to many students. The first and most important thing about DILR is picking the right question guys. If you pick the right question, you have won half the battle. That is because DILR is all about your attempts. Most often students have 80% accuracy easily. Ideally you will have almost everything correct. So if you maximize your attempts, your score will shoot up. To give you an example, last year the slot 1 paper had 4 easy questions guys and 2 of the questions were like even if I say I am a very weak candidate, I can crack it in within in half an hour. So if you pick the right question, let's say you picked right 3 questions among those 4, you will get 95. 4 questions among the 4, fantastic you will get 99 plus. But how do we pick these questions? Many people say that spend about 5 to 10 minutes and go through all the questions and then select questions that you feel are very easy. It might work, it has worked for many people but personally I feel it's a huge gamble if I pick the wrong question. But something that has always worked for me is skimming guys. Skimming through all the questions, that is it just takes about 20 to 30 seconds. I look for, I glance through all the questions, I look for questions which are least verbose, which has very little content. It might seem like it is so silly, it might not necessarily work all the time. But trust me, it works more times than it does not. That is, last year there were two questions. One is on uh, linear arrangement in the slot 2, which was very easy, very less verbose. There was another question which was more small content, that is set theory question. But it was moderately difficult. Even if it is difficult, then you can spot it very soon. Within the one and a half, two minutes, you can read the question and you can feel, okay, this is difficult, I can skip it. The skipping process will also be fast. So, instead of the, the general strategy is going through chronological order, first set, second set, that is very, very bad. This is much better than that. The second thing to observe when selecting the question is the quantum of variable, guys. It is very important. If you catch it, then within one, one and a half minutes, you can dump the question and move ahead. If there are too many variables, many rows and many columns to fill, you skip the question immediately. To give you an example, let's say there are five people who have five different cars. Until now, it's fine. They work for five different companies. That is also fine. They went to five different universities. This is like adding one more layer. From 25 combinations to it is going to 125 combinations. It is difficult. Let's say you still feel that I am good at arrangement. Rather than doing a Venn diagram, I will do this. If it is a strong suit, it is good. Let's say they add one more condition that the cars are either brought from vendor A or vendor B. That is too difficult. You got to dump it. As soon as you spot too many variables, you dump and move ahead. The third strategy to pick the questions is quantum of conditions guys. Let's say there are too many conditions, too much to wrap your head around. You need to collectively think about all the conditions to fix the puzzle. It's, it's like uh, you'll get befuddled, you'll miss one of the conditions, somewhere you'll get lost and you'll spend a lot of time, you'll get stuck for a long, long time. See, I have a friend, she is very good at DILR. She is like, she sees the condition, she fixes everything in her head. Half of the things, she will fix it in her head. If you are that good, then with conditions, then you should go ahead. Or else, if you are an average Joe like me, then you should uh, try to avoid such questions. What do I mean by conditions? It is not necessarily true all the time. If the conditions are more straightforward, let's say A is greater than B, then E is equal to 2. If such is the case and from a different condition, you know that A is less than B. So, E is not equal to 2. So, every condition is giving you a final product. It is fixing something. Then conditions are fine. If the conditions are like there are three different conditions in row which has not fixed anything, three different conditions in columns and you have to collectively think of each one of them together to arrive at the final product. Then such things you got to avoid. 
see usually to understand that it is this difficult it will take you about three to four minutes but students are like i have already spent three four minutes this is not the time i can't move ahead now don't fret it guys if you fret four minutes then likely you will spend another 15 minutes so talking about this we will look we'll come to our fourth strategy that is cap the maximum time for each set guys let's say you set a personal target either four or five or six minutes it's all about your instincts if you feel that uh, it has been five minutes and you have not made any reasonable progress you don't feel like you are uh, anywhere close to completing it then you got to dump the question you have to be like uh, with a heavy heart or not you got to dump it or let's say you feel that you're almost there you're missing one point and if you push it further you'll get it even in such cases do the strategy that you go to a different set you complete that let's say you take 10 15 minutes and then you come back when you come back and revisit the questions your subconscious will be working in the background and when you come back you will look at all the conditions more carefully and more faster very faster you'll finish that question so set a maximum cap let's say five four or six minutes and beyond that you are not spending unless you feel you'll get it and this is very important guys this is because every year students there will be students who will spend like 20 minutes on a set and then they will skip and their total overall score and their LRDI will go for a toss don't let that happen make sure you set a maximum cap for yourself the next strategy is writing down each and every condition that is very important if you take either LR or DI there is two steps of solving it first one is you collate all the data you take all the data you put it in a reasonable manner you will understand after that you try to get the approach and you solve it so getting the data is very crucial part of it any condition that is there in the question you'll put it on your worksheet you put it such that you need not refer the question again if you want to solve it you just refer your worksheet or else what happens you miss one of the conditions you have not written it down you'll get lost you'll get befuddled you're all over the place you're looking for the question you're not finding it you're spending a lot of time it's a vicious cycle so try to write down each and every condition so that uh, there are two advantages one is you are subconsciously reinforcing your mind that uh, there is a condition this it will be concretized in your memory the first one is it, it will subconsciously re-energize your memory that it is there here you, you will not forget it and second one is you will know so you, you are less likely to miss such a condition so make sure you write down each and every condition the next strategy is prioritize your preparation guys you need to know what is your strong suit considering that about just about 30 35 days is left you need to know where you can focus on so that you can at least get two sets or three sets you can nail them so if you look at the trend last two three years every year there is one or two data arrangement questions there is always a Venn diagram question there is a games and tournament question there is math based computational based puzzles you can expect pie charts question too so every year guys so try to target them try to get a hold of them in cat if they are considerably easy you can ace them and coming to what happened last year if you look at slot one the first question is pie chart based question guys it was very easy pie chart and bar graph there was no bar graph only pie chart but it was very easy the second one was the venn diagram question uh, the third one venn diagram you can expect every year it comes year on year third and fourth data uh, data arrangement question again comes it every year the sixth one was a math based puzzle the eighth one was games and tournaments that was uh, again uh, sort of logical and sort of n cross and matrix it was very easy so these questions you can expect every year if you look at slot two again the first one is a venn diagram question the second one is a sort of a substitute for bar graphs and pie chart you can say it was a sort of a coordinate geometry thing where uh, you have the areas through which you will calculate the profit of companies the sixth and eighth one are data arrangement question linear arrangement the sixth one was fairly simple linear arrangement where uh, the interviewers you arrange the eighth one was again sort of math based but again doable you had you also had a math based puzzle so very similar trends you can observe all in all the second slot was much difficult guys if you see the first slot first slot was not so computational intensive here four of the questions were very computationally intensive so every year you cannot say that uh, if slot one is easy slot two is going to be difficult you cannot say it is always tentative anything can happen this is a live example of that slot one was easy while slot two had many moderate to difficult and difficult questions you can say all these strategies are fine for the day of the exam but what should i do just about 30 35 days is left is it even possible is it even realistic should i just give up or what should i do guys never give up cat is all about the struggle going towards the end 
survive until the end whoever survives they are the one who will get 90 percent time if about two to three months was left then i would say you need to solve two sets every day you need to get a hold of two sets every day two variety puzzles but now just about one month is left i'll say you need to do three to four every day if you're starting out now every day you solve three to four eccentric puzzles solve variety of puzzles dilr is all about getting a hold of variety of ideas different ideas solving from different perspectives take sectionals guys usually i wouldn't advise to take sectionals because uh, sectionals is not the actual representation of cat the you don't have the grind the fatigue the mind fatigueness those things don't happen but when it comes to dilr you need to get exposed to variety of ideas for that sectionals is a good thing when it comes to dilr so take sectionals and especially if i talk about dilr Kraku is just amazing guys if you look at the questions of dilr this is just an amazing place the question banks are so creative so well designed each time you get a totally different idea so you got to try them you can try them too and the next one i will say is guys try to develop a hobby of solving puzzles like every time you solve something uh, you are deducing something you are deciphering something you are doing some crossword puzzle or you are a fan of chess always involve in sort of brain activity so that this builds a natural stamina of deducing things and uh, logical reasoning Nowadays, DIs are getting very math intensive, very computational intensive. How do I tackle that? Half of it is math, half of it is logic. I'm using the calculator which is slow. How do I tackle this? You need to know multiples till 30 guys, at least till 30. You need to know up till squares till 25. Say if I ask what is 23 square, you need to know it is 529. If I ask what is, uh, uh, let's say 29 square, you need to know it is 841. You got to know fractions. If I ask you what is 1 by 13, immediately you need to, uh, it will come to your mind that it is 7.69%. 1 by 17, 5.88%. So fractions till 1 by 25, you got to mug it up. If you know these things, it will really help you in speed match. You can do much faster in your exams. And lastly, guys, it is all about practice, practice, practice. We all know the famous saying, practice makes the man perfect. In the same way, if you keep practicing DILR section, your practice will hook up your DILR scores. So keep practicing, keep working hard. We'll see you soon, guys. Thank you.